Alrighty, traders. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is the weekly outlook for the week of September 23rd, 2018. Hope you guys had a good and safe and relaxing weekend. Let's jump right into things. Um, first and foremost, I just want to make a formal announcement that we I did go ahead and reopen our lifetime membership for another two weeks. Um, one week has already passed by. There's one week left on that. So if you guys are interested on more information about that, just send me a message on social media. But other than that, guys, thank you for being here today. If this is your guys' first time on the Weekly Outlook, my name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. I've been doing these weekly outlooks for a little bit over two years now. So I do them for free every Sunday for you guys, just about every Sunday that I can. So um, also if you guys are new or just even if you're new or whatever, um, and not, or not new, just a disclaimer that this information is for educational and informational purposes only guys. Uh, this is not investing advice. Please be taking your own guys as trades. So this is just kind of a little outlook what I think is going to happen for the week. So remember that. Um, but first and foremost, opening it up with the economic calendar for the week, a um, couple of notable things. One thing is in the morning, so in about 12 hours or 13 hours from now, we're going to see the president of the European Central Bank, Mr. Mario Draghi, speaking. Um, if you guys are trading any euro pairs, expect that to move. And then um, tomorrow evening, there is the governor of the Bank of Japan, Mr. Kuroda, speaking. So two... Um, heads of central banks speaking. But the main thing I just really want to focus on, guys, there's a couple things on Tuesday as well, but is Wednesday. So Wednesday morning and afternoon is pretty big. Wednesday morning for sure. So uh, there is a FOMC press conference and a federal funds rate with an FOMC statement and economic projections. So this is pretty much, uh, if you guys are not familiar with this type of meeting or what's happening, um, this happens eight times a year, so it's pretty volatile. It only happens eight times every 12 months. And basically, they're going to be de deciding to raise interest rates or not raise interest rates or even decrease interest rates, depending on the central bank. If you guys have been following the Federal Reserve and what they've been talking about, their expectations, their outlook, that type of thing, what their projections are, we can see economic projections right here. They're going to, re they're going to give an updated one on Wednesday, but... Pretty much the gist of what I'm trying to say is they have talked about raising interest rates four times this year, and they've already raised interest rates twice. So we can pretty much expect two more times this year, and the third time looks like it's going to be on Wednesday. They're going to. The reason why a lot of uh, also just a little education for you guys that might be newer. Um, if you look at interest rates, a lot of times, I mean, it's all like an exact number, but for the um, Federal Reserve, they do a quarter of a basis point. So instead of right now, it's between 1.75% and 2%. So that's why you see less than 2%. And so basically, if it goes up, it's going to go up from between 2% and 2 and a quarter percent. It's going to go up a quarter percent. Okay. And then a couple hours after that, there's an interest rate decision for the New Zealand dollar, as well as a monetary policy statement and rate statement. Um, all released at the same time. So that's that's our key risk event for the week is the interest rate decision from the Federal Reserve and the FOMC press conference following that. So big, big market mover. I would not, unless you're deep in profit on USD pairs, I wouldn't, you know, look at taking trades Wednesday morning, um, wait for that to happen and cool down before you look at entering the market um, if you haven't already. So um, I want to go over four setups with you guys today. So um, again, these I'm not making these weekly outlooks super dragged out and going over every single pair. Um, I'm just going to go over what I'm most focused on, what setups I'm looking at the most. So let me show everything and let me show you guys. So dollar index, uh, this is the first one. I mean, some of you guys can trade it depending on your broker, but mostly this is just, we look at this to gauge our trades on Euro USD, but for a while you guys can see so si since September 13th so 10 days ago I posted this trading idea I've been talking about it on the daily webinars if you're a member of positive traders and also on the weekly outlooks but I have been expecting the dollar index to weaken a little bit so the dollar to weaken Euro USD to go higher and if I go ahead and play this in fast forward we can see that this is 
fulfilling, you know, up until now it's, it's uh, doing what we want. So it did break that support on the dollar index and did move lower. And I'm expecting this similar move. So I'm still bearish on the dollar index to be short with you guys. Euro USD, very similar setup here. Um, I am bullish on Euro USD. I've been bullish for a while, but more specifically since again, September 13th, I went ahead and posted this setup. I shared it all over the place for you guys. It got quite a lot of traction on TradingView. If you guys don't follow me on TradingView, it's just my first and last name, David Schinkel. And you can see like 511 people have seen this idea, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm expecting Euro USD to continue moving higher. It broke out of pretty significant um, resistance. Um, if you've been following along with my weekly weekly webinars, I've gone over um, more in depth. In uh, yes, la last week's weekly outlook. If you guys didn't get a chance to go, if you if maybe you're new and this is the first one that you're watching, definitely go on my YouTube channel. Just search up Positive Traders and watch last week's webinar. Um, it was a little bit longer, um, I, but I went over a lot of education. I broke down a lot of pairs. I went, um, you know, I actually I believe I marked up a a full chart from a completely blank chart to how I mark up and how I find a trade and how I find my analysis. So that's pretty interesting if you want to um, go and see that. But um, anyways, zero USD, I am expecting 119 to be hit at some point. So dollar index is the opposite of euro USD. Now, um, another pair we saw, I saw a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of talk on this on Friday when this move happened, a lot of you guys may have seen this pound yen dropped pretty hard on Friday. It had broken, some pretty significant resistance and then proceeded to drop about 200 pips um, throughout Friday. This week I am interested in looking for sells on pound yen. Um, if you guys have been following me again for a while, we, we've talked about how important the 148 level is. Um, right now we saw a major like fake out right around that level at the end of last week. And I think we're going to see more downside if we, oops, um, if we see this on a four hour, and we just plot like a simple trend line right here. Um, we can see, sorry guys, I need to see. For some reason it looks like I'm on, I'm logged in, but I don't know why it has me on the free plan. So sorry about that. But it's dropped or it's broken a major uptrend, right? So look for a possible retest. What I'm looking for right now, I am not interested in jumping into this trade until a couple things maybe today like maybe during this daily candle if we get a clean retest on the four hour um, of the 148 level like if we get a nice pullback um, and then we get like a nice bearish engulfing candle something like that i'll look at taking a sell putting my stop loss above the 148 level and then targeting lows i want to make sure first and foremost that my risk ratio on any trade that i take is good but a more conservative what i would do is just get that confirmation on the daily chart make sure um, we can get another bearish close and we continue lower but definitely watching this on the four hours for more downside so this sh this should be a, a pair that you guys are watching um, and the rest i do just want to look at nzd usd really quickly um, i talked a lot about this on the, the private webinars last week but i am expecting a reversal um, aud usd should follow suit as well but i'm just more interested on NZD USD right now as far as like targets go, but I am expecting and I will mark this up actually I meant to mark this NZD USD. I'm expecting it to rise To the previous weekly support level around like 68. So right now we're at we're trading at 66 86 and at least 68 I think is what we're gonna see so that's about 120 pips. So um, uh, That's what I'm looking for on that pair and finally, USD CAD guys, I am still bearish on USD CAD looking for price to go towards the buy zone. So just to recap, um, and again, guys, just why it's good to follow my weekly outlooks. And, you know, it's if you guys can, can't tell by now, I'm a very quality over quantity type of trader, right? There's some telegrams that are, you know, super active and giving out crazy trades. But in my opinion, I don't think that you have to, you know, there, there are times and places, but groups that do that day in and day out, week out, week, week over. Um, I'm not a big, I don't, I'm not a big advocate of taking a ton of trades. I mean, you can just ask yourself, right? Would you rather take 10 trades or a hundred trades and get the same result, right? It's a lot less emotional, a lot less mental, a lot just easier um, and simpler if you just focus on um, none, and it doesn't necessarily have to be higher time frames, but just good quality, focusing on the risk ratio of your trades, right? Taking fewer trades, but quality trades. 
So again, on the 13th, back on September 13th, I posted this and I said that I was bearish on USDCAD, expecting it to go down towards this buy zone around 128. And you can see price is falling really nicely towards that zone, guys. So um, really not much else to say. I'm not interested in selling USDCAD right now. I'm just really watching this pair like a hawk and waiting for um, this price to get towards my buy zone. So definitely going to evaluate price action around this area. It's also a possibility. So let me just go to the live charts. It's very possible that when we do get to this buy zone right around here, that we see a fake out to induce sellers, right? That are selling on a base of these trend lines breaking and then maybe a fake out. So I'm going to watch to see what happens in this area. It's also, you know, very possible that we don't see that and we just see like a perfect just nice buy and then take off. But um, as if you guys are curious about my targets, long-term targets, 134 back to the highs and then breaking them, we'll go from there. So that is the weekly outlook, guys. Short and sweet and to the point. Again, guys, there is one week left if you are not already a member of Positive Traders. The lifetime membership right now, which is literally lifetime membership to everything that I do, lifetime membership to the group. And right now I do signals. I do daily webinars, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. If you're in the private group, um, I have a trade copier, which you can set up and be connected to um, with a 0% profit share. So any money that I make you, you keep 100% of it. All of that is, and then of course our education, anything that is released as far as digital content, videos, that type of thing, as well as the videos that are already pre-recorded. Um, the lifetime membership is $9.97 and we decided to keep the lifetime membership after um, this week, but that's going to be going up to um, $4,500 just because of the value, especially with the trade copier, mostly focus on the trade copier for large investors. So if you guys are interested in getting in the lifetime membership, shoot me a message on social media, one week left. Um, but other than that, guys, hopefully these setups help you guys out. Remember to, again, you cannot stress enough on risk ratio. And of course, always, I mean, I shouldn't even have to talk about risk management, but always, always, always good risk management on your guys' trades, right? Use that position size calculator. If you don't know what I'm talking about and that's new to you, watch last week's webinar. I went over all of this. Um, and other than that, guys, have a safe trading week. See you guys later.